This is an example of the uh, ZERI, Zero Emissions Research Initiatives uh, approach. Um, this brewery in Namibia, Southern Africa, slogan is good beer, no chemicals, no pollution, more sales and more jobs. They produce seven times more food, fuel and fertilizer, four times as many jobs and 12 more products compared to a conventional beer producer. They use a fully integrated biosystem with 40 different biochemical processes that reuse everything from heat, water, waste, and carbon dioxide. They grow mushrooms on spent grain. The chickens eat worms in the grain. They digest the mushroom chicken feed and chicken waste to generate methane, uh, which is uh, used for fermentation. Uh, and then the alkaline water goes into fish ponds, where eight different types of fish are grown uh, to um, uh, neutralize all the uh, materials that go into the water. Uh, it's a great example of a Ziri approach. And here's another one talking about mushroom farming on coffee waste. In a typical coffee plant, uh, about 99% of the plant is not used, is wasted. Um, so instead of having it go to waste, in a Ziri approach, uh, they would grow earthworms on uh, the waste material and shiitake mushrooms. The shiitake mushrooms uh, would uh, break down the lignin in the coffee plant, the, uh, the structural member of the plant. Um, in doing so, when it, that material is, is then fed as cattle feed to, um, uh, to cattle and pig feed, um, the animals don't produce gas because gas is re the result of incomplete digestion and the shiitake mushrooms have helped them in that and produced another valuable product. Uh, the manure from the uh, animals goes into a digester uh, where the, uh, the gas from the digester is used to cook the mushrooms and the uh, solids coming out, the digestate, uh, is used as a fertilizer to help grow more vegetables. So um, this highlights uh, producing more uh, from what nature produces, a basic concept of Zuri. So getting into some of the details of how to measure zero waste and sustainable resource management, um, one of the key ideas is that you need multiple measures. Uh, Toyota says you recycle some, you recycle more, then you recycle less. And the reason they say that is uh, when you reduce and reuse, you actually uh, decrease your recycling rate. So uh, the best way for zero waste businesses to measure their performance will include a variety of measures, not just one simple diversion calculation. Um, the 90% number is what uh, the Zero Waste International Alliance has said is the measure of performance towards their definition of zero waste. Diverting 90% from landfills and incinerators is what's needed to be considered a zero waste business. Uh, dividing it up by the products produced uh, for an individual business is a good way of uh, uh, normalizing that over time and over different economic conditions. Um, in the community world, uh, per capita is increasingly being used as a measure of performance. Um, having a, another way of multi, uh, measuring uh, reduced wasting, wasting and reuse systems is important. Um, and looking at how to measure reductions to the environment, air, water, land, and TMDLs, the, uh, total maximum di discharge loads into rivers under the uh, Federal uh, Clean Water Act uh, are uh, key measurement tools uh, that could be used to look at the percentage to the environment uh, according to the Clean Air Act and the Clean Water Act. Another key idea is to recognize that it's not just about the tons, so even though the 90% diversion is a really powerful metric, um, the fact of the matter is that uh, the most savings come from reducing and reusing. Um, and it may not be um, all about uh, the tons. So in the reuse realm, we highlighted how Toyota 
uh, saved all that money with reusable shipping containers. Um, that's a good example that um, uh, it's a very valuable thing to do, um, even if it's not as many tons involved. Uh, there are many other principles uh, that the Zero Waste International Alliance has adopted to help guide businesses as to other practices that should be considered, and those are the Zero Waste Business Principles posted at the Zuia.org website, including the triple bottom line, uh, precautionary principle, um, pollution prevention, highest and best use, incentives, and using non-toxic production, reuse, and recycling processes. The hierarchy of highest and best use, um, this is an example of uh, uh, the uh, concept in the zero waste business principles of focusing on the uh, top of the hierarchy of reduce and reuse first um, and redesign is a really key element um, and then recycling and composting uh, would be all under that recycling label, uh, regulating uh, things. Uh, like product bans we talked about earlier, is if uh, businesses don't do it uh, themselves on an industry-wide basis. And what's highlighted as not okay is burning and burying materials, uh, particularly in the U.S. The subtitle D landfills are uh, much weaker standards than the European Union uh, 1999 landfill directive, which um, is much more protective of the environment and human health. As a result of all this, um, the, there are a number of zero waste business recognition and certification programs that have been developed because businesses want to uh, achieve this and then be recognized so they can advertise that they are zero waste businesses. Uh, the Zero Waste International Alliance in 2012 adopted a, a zero waste business recognition program. Um, which has uh, national affiliates, uh, Zero Waste Canada in Canada, uh, Grassroots Recycling Network in America, um, and uh, um, other organizations around the world. The U.S. Zero Waste Business Council was set up at uszwbc.org to uh, set up a more comprehensive certification program beyond recognition that will be more like the U.S. Green Building Council um, program for certifying green buildings under the LEED program. Uh, UL Environment, Underwriter Labs, and NSF, a uh, similar organization, uh, develops, um, uh, have developed their own uh, recognition and validation programs, and UL is now championing development of a Na American National Standards Institute standard that all these organizations could um, work together to certify, recognize, or validate against that ANSI standard. That program has just gotten, gotten underway. It'll probably be a year or two before it's completed. Uh, for zero waste businesses, um, coordinating all these types of programs is going to be a priority for this next year. Promoting those businesses that are validated, recognized, certified is really important. And then getting this WIA zero waste definition into federal, state, and local um, agency definitions and regulations and into climate change and sustainability and zero waste plans. Um, just as an indicator, uh, US EPA asked for comments in 2011 on their definitions and how they calculate uh, how much municipal solid waste is being uh, disposed of versus recycled, and um, they got strong support for updating the definitions um, when they were asking about it, and the most comments of any issue that they were asking about came in about the definition of zero waste, um, and they were calling upon EPA to adopt the ZWIA definition of zero waste or something that um, is like that uh, to underscore how they could uh, have an impact in the marketplace by not having everyone waste their time trying to figure out what do you mean by zero waste when uh, you're talking about it. And uh, uh, we're seeing this as an indicator of great progress. Hopefully EPA will be uh, adopting this WIA definition 
uh, in the next year uh, or so.